Hi there, my name is Neil Blevins, and this tutorial is called Creating Orthographic Reference Images in 3ds Max. So something I have to do frequently is to make a model of an object for which I only have orthographic reference images. Basically, I have a front view, side view, and top view, and I need to make a 3D model that matches the reference. So this video is a quick demo on how I go about doing this inside of 3ds Max and Photoshop. So the basic process is, number one, breaking up the ortho reference images into separate images. Number two, use my Max script image plane maker to create the reference images in 3D space. And then three, creating my model using the see-through feature. Okay, so for this live demo, I'll be using my Testudo spaceship design. Now, of course, I already have a 3D model of this, but imagine you love this ship and you want to make your own 3D fan model of it, and all you have are these three orthographic images. So we'll start off by making our three separate ortho images. I'll just duplicate this layer and let's start with the top view. So I will grab this and crop it, have a little border around here. And uh, just to get rid of that last little bit here, let me get rid of that. Now I want this to be centered properly. And so what I will do is I will make a little selection here and that selection is about centered. And then if I pull it over to the other side, I can see that it's not perfectly centered. This is more perfectly centered here. And so what I'll do is I'll select the rest of this side and then I'll crop that. And now it should be perfectly centered. And of course, if you want to do this with, um, you know, more exact with very specific tools, feel free. But usually this is close enough for me to get what I need. And then now let's save this top view. There we go. So now let's work on the front view. And what I'm going to do is I will select this, copy it, and paste it into here. And I want to make sure that this matches in terms of the number of pixels. So what I do here is I bring this down. And if you look at the ship, this ship is a little bit smaller. The front view is smaller in terms of number of pixels than the, the full size ship. So I want to fix that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this a little bit. And another way you can sort of be sure on this is if you look at like this engine here and this engine here, you want this to be matched up, which again, seems to be pretty good there. So yeah, I think that's going to look pretty good. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because um, these orthographic images are for reference, uh, but as close as possible is a good thing. So what I will do is I will select this whole thing, do a crop. And then I will control click this image here, which is the top one, and then do a crop on that. And so now we have a front view and notice that the width of the front view here is identical to the width of the top view, which is gonna be important later on. So I'll show you that in a minute. But in the meantime, let's uh, save this guy as front. Okay. Okay, now I wanna do the side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the side here and paste it into the top view. And let's rotate it so that it matches. And what I wanna do is make sure, of course, that the distance from here to here matches the top view. So let me bring this down in opacity and I'll put that down there and transform this up. So let's That's decent. Okay, so that's pretty matched there. And then let me rotate this to be in the direction that I want. So we now know that the distance from here to here is the same as the top to bottom distance on the top. And uh, let me just erase this stuff here. So we're good on the side here, except what we also want is we want the distance from here to here to be identical to the distance from here to here on the front view. So let me just copy this and I'll put this guy in here, reduce its opacity down so we can match it. And there you go. That is now pretty closely matched. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. And so if we look here, if I um, control click on here, we can see that that's what the crop is supposed to be, except we also want the parts that are here and here. And so what I will quickly do is I will add those parts. I think we're 
need one more pixel there. That's good. And then do the same over on the other side. Okay, and now it will put this up to full intensity and we'll get rid of it, and that's the crop we want. There you go. And so now we will save this as a side view. Now one final sanity check. We're just gonna look here and we can see that this is 1488 across and 1800 high. And we can see this is 1488 across and 577. And then this one should be that 577 and the 1800 wide. So we're good. We now have these all matched up in terms of sizes. And we also have the individual images matched in terms of pixel width um, and height. So now let's go over to 3ds Max. Okay, here we are inside of 3D Studio Max, and I'm using my Soulburn script, the one over here called Image Plane Maker UI. And uh, if you don't have the Soulburn scripts, feel free to go to neilblevins.com and go to the assets section, and you can see where to download them. It's got a bunch of different scripts that are helpful for doing various Max related things. And what this does is it takes those images that we just created and creates a series of three uh, reference planes with them. So we'll start with the top, and we'll match this with the top. And then the front, we will take there. And then the side here. And leave everything else the same and hit apply. And there we go. So you can see here, we now have the top view on this plane, the side view there, and the front view there. And just make that bigger. We can now uh, get rid of this. And these are placed on planes you can't select because they are frozen. What it does is it creates a little layer here um, and then freezes the layer. So all three of these are frozen. These things show up in the viewport and they are not renderable, although you can always, of course, take them and make them renderable if you want to render them. But otherwise, there you go. You have your uh, separate planes to start making your model. Now, the final step, of course, is actually making the 3D model, which I'm not going to go into all the details of because I already have a 3D model of this. But just to show you my general way of doing this is I will start usually from the top and I will put in, say, a box. Like, let's say we want to start doing the wing. And there is a nice little feature under object properties called see through. And when you click that, it allows you to see through the object, but see underneath to whatever is below it. So in this case, um, let me switch this over to the right view. I would start placing the wing. The wing is about here on height. And then I would take this and I would convert this into an edible poly. And I would start pushing and pulling vertices. until I got myself something that was close to that wing shape, and I would continue to refine from here. Again, using this see-through method to see. And then, of course, a bunch of this is also um, symmetrical, like um, everything on this side is basically copied over there. So I would use the symmetry modifier and other such things in order to make sure that um, I have symmetry so I don't have to build each part separately. But that's, that's basically it. That is the way I go about setting up um, this particular um, configuration of reference images. And then I can use that to build whatever 3D model I need to using that inside of 3D space. So thank you very much. I hope you found this interesting. And please go to neilblevins.com and go into the art lesson section if you want to see a whole bunch of tutorials like this. And in fact, I recently revamped it where I got rid of a bunch of old ones that were no longer working and added a bunch of new ones. So check it out. And if you want to be notified the next time I post a new video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.